So say after me. I, I do in the name of the Almighty God swear. That I will at all times. That I will at all times. Well and truly serve the Republic of Ghana. Well and truly serve the Republic of Ghana. In the office of. In the office of. Infrastructure and investment fund. And that I will uphold. And that I will uphold. Preserve. Preserve. Protect. Protect. And defend the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. And defend the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. As by law established. As by law established. So help me God. So help me God. The second is the oath of secrecy. Again, I, I, holding the office of, holding the office of, Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund, do in the name of the Almighty God swear, do in the name of the Almighty God swear, that I will not directly or indirectly, that I will not directly or indirectly, communicate or reveal to any person. Communicate or to any person. Any matter which shall be brought under my consideration. Any matter which shall be brought under my consideration. Or shall come to my knowledge. Or shall come to my knowledge. In the discharge of my official duties. In the discharge of my official duties. Except as may be required for the discharge of my official duties. Except as may be required for the discharge of my official duties. Or as may be specially permitted by law. Or as may be specially permitted by law. So help me God. So help me God. Fellow Gadeans, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure formally to inaugurate a new nine member board of the Ghana Investment Infrastructure Fund with its new chairperson, Professor Abaya Kumfi and its new Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Solomon Asamoah. The fund is an important vehicle which Ghana can use its 250 million seed funding to leverage capital from other sources for the nation's infrastructure financing and development. It is agreed that one of the major impediments to increased economic activity and development in our country is the lack of a fully developed infrastructure. And here, I refer to accessible transportation systems, which allow for the easy transfer of people and goods to markets, affordable, reliable power, affordable telecommunication services, and greater industrial and manufacturing platforms. It is equally clear that interest, investments in infrastructure lead or should lead to greater economic activity and job creation. The challenge is finding the money and expertise to make such investments from both public and private sector sources. The public sector within our current constrained financial circumstances, cannot on its own provide and finance all of our infrastructure needs. We have to mobilize the private sector to fill the gap, and that is how we will be able to achieve our goals for infrastructure development. This is the principal objective of the fund, which is to accelerate economic growth. To realize this objective, the fund must be run on the basis of the principles of strong corporate governance. The board is composed of nine members chosen by the President of the Republic who according to the Enabling Statute Act 877 of 214, the Ghana Investment Infrastructure Fund Act should have the necessary integrity, knowledge, expertise, and experience in matters relevant to the functions of the board. 
at least three members of the board should be women. A member of the board has, in the words of the statute, and I quote, the same fiduciary relationship with the fund and the same duty to act with loyalty and in good faith as a director of a company incorporated under the Companies Act 1963 Act 179. The statute has also designated the Minister for Finance as the public official to whom the fund should account for the achievement of its objectives and compliance with the conditions of the statute. The Act has also created an advisory committee for the fund, composed of five persons, at least one of whom should be a woman. Three members of the committee are ex officio members, the Minister for Finance, the Governor of the Bank of Ghana, and the Director General of the National Development Planning Commission and the other two are from the private sector. The committee's duty is to advise the board on the performance of its functions whilst respecting its independence. These provisions express forcefully the strong basis of good governance on which the fund is expected to operate. I believe that I have fulfilled my responsibilities in the choices I have made to the board. It is led by a respected public servant who has earned an enviable reputation both in his work as an academic and as a politician. Originally a zoologist who rose to become vice, pro vice chancellor of the University of Cape Coast, he ended up as director general of the Ghana Education Services. This provided a springboard to a successful life in politics, where he served with distinction in the high offices of Minister for Education, and even more relevantly for our purposes here, Minister for Railways, Ports and Harbors. He is eminently qualified to act as chairperson of the fund. The Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Solomon Asamoa, is amongst the foremost specialists in infrastructural financing on the African continent. He has been personally responsible for over four billion United States dollars in infrastructure investments across Africa and has occupied senior positions in some of the continent's premier institutions. Vice President of the African Development Bank, the Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the Africa Finance Corporation, Vice President of the Development Bank of Southern Africa and Special Assistant to the Chief Executive Officer of the International Finance Corporation in Washington. He is uniquely qualified for this role and I'm confident that he will surely unlock new sources of finance for the infrastructural development of our country. The other seven members, three of whom are women, also brings strong skills to the board. A leading quantity surveyor, a successful businesswoman, and an up-and-coming young banker define the women. And the three men are a well-known investment banker, an ICT specialist, and another banker. The three ex officio members of the advisory committee are amongst the most important officials in the management of the national economy, who are joined by the female managing director of Barclays Bank and a female development consultant. The bricks are all in place to construct a strong building. Finally, I would like to encourage the board to be bold and proactive without being reckless. I would urge you to make things happen in the infrastructure space for Ghana with creativity and purpose. To help unlock new sources of finance and investment for Mother Ghana. And to work closely with other Ghanaian institutions, both public and private, so that infrastructure investment in the country can be raised 
and more jobs can be created and our economy developed rapidly. I look forward to being regularly updated with the progress of the fund, and I expect to hear only good things. With these words, I declare the gift board and the advisory com committee duly inaugurated. God bless you, and God bless our country, Ghana. Thank you. Let me express the appreciation of members of the board to His Excellency for selecting us to serve on this important board. Second, Mr. President, you have selected a number of experts in the field of law, business, banking, ICT, as members of the board. You've also selected someone whose expertise is in none of these areas for a purpose, to be a watchdog. Well, Mr. President, let me assure you that I'm a great believer in your vision to build a prosperous Ghana. I believe that a board such as this should be mindful of value for money, first and foremost. It should also be in a position to attract investment into Ghana. Mr. President, infrastructure development is not only crucial to our development, but it's also a means of creating jobs. And I believe that with colleagues on the board, we will work very, very hard to let you achieve your aims. Mr. President, it is a young fund. The seed money is most welcome, but we also hope that with the expertise of Mr. Solomon Asamoah, <laughs> we should be in a position of attracting more funds. We won't be the kind of fund that is always, always going to rush to you for more money. Mr. Finance Minister, take that as an assurance. <laughs> but Mr. Finance Minister, we heard of your capping of statutory <laughs> releases. Mr. Finance Minister, I hope we are excluded <laughs> from this exercise noting that we are only a young fan. Mr. President, with these few words, let me once again express our deepest appreciation to you. We are in a hurry too. And we hope that as soon as possible, you will hear some good news from us. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs>